Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to do an example problem where we have an object sliding over a flat surface and where the coefficient of friction is not going to be constant, but it's going to depend on position, on distance away from the origin or from the point where x equals zero. The reason why we're doing this video and a couple more is because a few viewers have asked me, do you have any examples where we deal with work, power, and energy where the friction is not constant, but we have to integrate to find the work done to overcome friction. So here we are, some examples to allow us to look at some examples like that. Okay, so again, the object here has a mass of five kilograms, has initial velocity 20 meters per second, and so how far will this block slide over the uh, horizontal surface when the friction is a variable friction like that? Okay, the way we do that is our initial approach is the same as any other approach. We say that the energy initial equals energy final. And so what is the initial energy? Well, it could be any work put into the system plus any sort of initial kinetic energy plus any sort of initial potential energy. And that must equal the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy plus any heat lost. And typically the heat loss is the portion of energy that's lost due to overcoming friction. Of course, in this case, that's going to be an important part of the problem. <clears throat> so. Initially, we can see that there's no work input to the system. The system already had energy of its own, so we can ignore that. It does have initial kinetic energy because it's moving at 20 meters per second, and it does not have any initial potential energy because it's at the ground level. At the very end, it will not have any kinetic energy because it will have come to a complete halt when it has exerted all of its effort or exerted all of its energy in overcoming the friction, so there will be no final kinetic uh, energy, there will be no final potential energy because it's at ground level. So essentially the equation becomes that the initial kinetic energy will equal to the heat lost to overcome the friction. Of course, the initial kinetic energy, we will know what that is because we know the mass, the initial velocity. So we know this is one half times the mass times the initial velocity squared equals the heat lost, which is the uh, force caused by the friction times distance. But we're going to put that in parentheses because we have to be careful here. The force caused by friction is not a constant. It's actually going to vary because the coefficient of friction will vary. So we'll have to handle that a little bit separately. We can plug in numbers here. So we can say this is 1 half times the mass, which is 5, times velocity squared, that's 20 squared. So it will be the force friction times the distance traveled. And so that would be 400 divided by 2, that's 200 times 5, that would be 1,000 joules equals the heat loss by friction. And again, I put it in parentheses because we know that that's not exactly the way we're going to solve that part of the problem. So now we're going to calculate how much heat we've lost to the friction. And since the force is going to be variable, we have to be careful here. Well, first of all, let's draw a force diagram. So we have the weight, uh, which is mg, pulling the box towards the floor. Then we have the normal force pushing back. So the normal force equals the weight of the object. And then we have the friction force, which is to the left. The force friction is going to be equal to the normal force times mu. But remember, mu is going to be a function of position. So what that means is we could say, let's take, for example, that we have the, the box right over here. And the box is now going to move a very small amount of dx, a very small amount of distance from this point to this point. So how much work will be done to overcome friction on that very small displacement? So what we can say is the amount of work done, let's call a very small amount of dw, and it's going to be equal to, equal to the force at that location times a small amount of displacement, of course. That's the force caused by the friction on the floor. We know that the force is equal to normal force times mu, so we can then say that dw is equal to the normal force times mu, which is a function of x, times dx. And the normal force, of course, is going to be m times g, so the small amount of work done to move the block from here to there, just an infinitesimal small little distance, is going to be equal to mg times mu. Now mu is going to be equal to 0 0.010 times x, Notice I divide this by meters. The reason why I divide this by meters is because x will be meters, and since mu is a unitless number, we want to be able to get rid of the units by putting divided by m. So just a small formality. And then, of course, we have to multiply that times plus 0, or also multiply times 0 
two zero, the constant part of mu, and then times dx. So what we've done here is we replace n by mg, and mu, which is defined right here, is right there. So now what we need to do is in order to find the work done to move the block the entire distance, which of course is going to be equal to the initial energy that it had, the initial kinetic energy of 1,000 joules, we can then from that figure out how far we've actually traveled before the block comes to a complete stop. That means that the total amount of work done is equal to the integral of all the small little dw's that we add up. So it's basically an integral is adding up all the little dw's, which is equal to, now we can move out the mg out of the integral sign, so it's going to be mg times the integral of 0.010x plus 0.2 times dx, and we're going to integrate from 0 to x equals x final. So whatever x final is, that's what we're trying to figure out, is how far we'll actually travel. So now we can go ahead and integrate that. So the amount of work done is equal to, to overcome friction of course, equal to mg times 0.010x squared divided by 2 plus 0.2x evaluated from 0 to x final. And then finally when we plug in the numbers, we get the following. So this is equal to, of course, mg, that would be the mass of 5 kilograms, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We multiply that times, uh, let's see here, that would be 0 0.005, because 0 0.01 divided by 2 is 0 0.005, times x squared, but we're going to plug in the final limit, which is x final squared, and that would be plus 0 0.2x final. All right, so that is the amount of work done to overcome the friction. We know that this is equal to G, uh, the 1,000 joules. So maybe what we could do, instead of writing it like that, we could simply say that's the work done to overcome friction. Over. And of course, that's what we're calculating over there. Now, when we put that in, a, in an equation, you'll find out we end up with a quadratic equation. So that means on the left side, we get 1,000 is equal to, that would be, uh, 49 times 0 0.05, that would be, let's see here, make sure I get that right. So we get uh, 49 times 0 0.005, so it's 0 0.245x squared, and then that's 49 times 0 0.2, that would be plus 9.8x. So notice we end up, and of course that's x final, but I'm just going to write x here because that makes it a little bit easier to work with. So notice that is the x final we're looking for. Now we have a quadratic equation which we have to solve. So we can say that 0 is equal to 0 0.245 x squared plus 9.8 x minus 1,000. And so if we solve this quadratic equation, we will find out what x is, how far the block has slid before it comes to a complete stop. All right, that means that x is equal to minus b, which is not minus 9.8, plus or minus the square root of 9.8 squared minus 4 times a 0 0.245 times a minus 1,000. Notice that this minus will cancel out that minus right there and divide the whole thing by 2a, which is 2 times 0 0.245. All right, so let's go ahead and work that out and see what x is equal to. So that gives us uh, 4,000 times 0.245 plus 9.8 squared. Take the square root of that, and that's 32.8. So that leaves us with uh, 9, that would be minus 9.8 plus or minus 32.8, all divided by 2 times this, which is 0 0.49. Okay, and then you can see that the only plausible answer is the minus 9.8 plus 32.8 because I use a minus, I get a negative number and there's no way that the block can end up before the starting point. It's going to be a some positive number. So we take 32.8, subtract 9, 9.8 from that and divide that by 0.49 equals, and so we end up with a distance of 46.9 46.9 meters, so that's about 47 meters. All right, 
uh, a quick check to make sure we did this right. So we have the coefficient here, and so 47 meters at 20 meters per second. That looks reasonable, so that is probably the answer. And so again, for quick review, whenever the, the coefficient of friction is not a constant, then we can simply multiply the friction force times the distance traveled, because the friction force is a variable. It changes with x, so therefore we have to find out how much work it takes to do a small little displacement, and then we integrate that from zero to wherever we're going, and so that's how we go ahead and find the true energy or the true work done to overcome friction in this case, and that's how we do that.